Welcome to another MakeMoreNoise.org screencast. What I'm going to show you this morning is slightly different from some of our previous tutorials and this is much more a special effect. Um, there is a useful little technique here as well. You can actually see how to do the cuts I'm doing which you can apply to lots of different situations but we're doing it specifically to get an effect here. Uh, so the first thing to say is we've got a drum part here that we've uh, taken from Stylus RMX and uh, some chords that I played in using a sound from ES2. Uh, just to give us something to work with, have a quick listen to that. Okay, for this particular screencast, we don't need this as MIDI, we actually want it as audio. So the first thing to do is to turn this MIDI region into an audio region, which we do by going File, Export, Region as Audio File. OK, now it's asking us where we want to save it, what we want to call it, what uh, file format we want it in, what bit depth, and whether we want to add the resulting file to our audio bin. I'm happy with all of those options, and I'm happy to call it Hard Attack Pad, and I'm happy to save it to the desktop, so save. OK, that's now bounced out, and hopefully in our media bin, we should now have an audio file called Hard Attack Pad. So the next thing we need to do is create a new audio track, uh, Stereo 1 which is what it's come up set to, so create, and then we can just drag this pad in and line it up. Uh, we don't need the original ES2 sound anymore, and uh, let's just knock the volume back on that a little bit, because I've bounced that a bit too hot. doesn't really matter for the purposes of what we're doing this morning, but uh, in an ideal world you want to get your bounces a little bit quieter than that. Okay, let's have a listen to what we've got now. Okay, sounds exactly the same as what we had before, which is what we were looking for. Um, so the next thing to do is select the scissor tool. And the scissor tool is fairly self-explanatory. You move it to where you want. And make a cut. Just going to Apple Z, Apple Z to undo both of those. Now one of the cool things you can do with the scissor tool is if you hold down the Option key, or the Alt key, depending on how old your Apple keyboard is, uh, it means exactly the same thing, it's just that the naming scheme of it's changed, we can actually get it to cut in increments we select. So if we want it to cut on the bar, we cut one bar in while holding down the Alt key, and it will cut literally across all the bars. Now what we're going to do is a little bit smarter than that. We're going to cut nice and tight so we end up with lots of little individual regions. OK, now that sounds hopefully still fairly similar to what we've already got, but we might hear some little cracks and clicks as it moves across these cuts. OK, that's pretty seamless actually. Now, the next stage of our trick is to put some fade in and fade outs within these audio regions. So we want to do exactly the same thing to all the audio regions, so we can either click in the track header here, which selects them all, or we can elastic band to select them all. Now, if you come up here, you can see we've got fade in, curve, fade out, curve. So we're going to put a fade in of 50, which we do by double clicking next to the uh, fade out, fade in options. Double click, fade in, and fade out of 50. And what we get now is a sort of pulsing rhythmic pad. Now, this works really well with synths, but it also is quite cool on guitars if you're trying to set up a rhythmic tremolo effect. And you can even be as inventive as to take alternate slices and move them to different tracks, pan them hard left, pan them hard right, put a bit of delay, different kinds of delay on the left and right. Uh, but this gives you a starting point, so let's have a listen to what we've got there. Let's take that a stage further by actually making that fade in harder. Uh, so. Sorry, we've got fade in, and then we want to select the curve option here, and we'll go for 25 initially, see what that gives us. I think it could even be a bit stronger than that. Let's go for a value of 50 again. And we'll do the same for the fade out, so fade out, and then the fade out curve, make that 50. Now you can actually, with the curves, have them as a minus number as well as a positive number. So just put a minus in front of our 50, 
of our fade in and a minus in front of our fade out. And we get a much more subtle fade in and fade out. Let's go back to our original settings of 50 and 50. And then, as I say, you can actually be a bit more inventive from there. So once you've got it set up like this, you could actually, let's just make the loop four bars rather than eight. So we're not having to do it across the whole thing. And let's just have the screen nice and big so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to mute every third one. So you can actually effectively play your own rhythms in using that method. Just muting the ones you do want to hear. I'm sorry, muting the ones you don't want to hear and keeping the ones you do want to hear unmuted. Let's just do that last one there. And then we'll put a bit of delay on it to smooth the whole thing out, uh, which we'll use Logic's inbuilt delay. Um, I'll use the tape delay because I like that one. Uh, let's just see if there's a half sensible preset. Um, can't remember what any of these sound like. Let's try a triplet. Again, it's one of those ideas you really need to experiment with yourself in your own environment. But I say this can be really useful on lots of different things. If you want to do that sort of um, stuttery glitch effect on vocals, same sort of idea. Just cut them to the 16ths and then you can copy and paste, mute some bits, keep some bits. Um, yeah, apply it to your audio experiment. Let's see how you get on from there. Thank you for watching.